I'm so excited to introduce to you today, Dr. Christos Ballas. He and his team work with a group of four of us for about five hours using different body balancing practices that made a huge difference, not just for me, but everybody on the tables. In this video, we will discuss magnets in lieu of acupuncture, the applicability of muscle testing and the entrainment model. All of that and so much more. Stay tuned and please subscribe so we can stay in touch. So much of what we're doing is getting the body to tune into the channel of, re of rejuvenation, tune into the channel of reboot, tune, in that, tune into a symphony of your higher self. Because only then will the system relax enough for it to do these higher functions. You don't remind me of what a typical chiropractor, how they operate. What makes you, what makes what you do unique and what sets you aside from other chiropractors you might find? Excellent question. Public perception of the chiropractors, like, you know, the, the chiropractors chase back pain. Chiropractors might be good for whiplash injuries, those two big domains. And there's, and there's a lot of reason why uh, that, that fits into the medical model, but the classical chiropractor, as it was originally designed, is a unique profession. Uh, I relate to that original definition. The original chiropractor was designed to look at the difference of your spiritual body, where there was light in your body, and where there was darkness. And the phrase they used is the same as a joint dysfunction. It's called subluxation. Sub being less, lux being light, nation being the body, right? So a classical chiropractor is, does, is looking at where your physical body is not actually uh, woven with your spiritual body, and there's actually separation of your physical and your spiritual. And that's analogous to the separation of the ego from spirit. Hmm. So those chiropractors were very um, metaphysically driven, let's say, and that's why there was so much resistance to chiropractors, not because they manipulate, not because we actually move bones, but the reason why we move bones. Right, osteopaths move bones to increase circulation. Uh, yoga therapists might move bones to actually help you get into a pose. Chiropractors, traditionally, the first chiropractor, D.D. Palmer, was practicing a form of Reiki. He called it animal magnetism. And he would beam the Reiki energy into the patient. And he was asking himself in his writings, why can't this patient absorb their own Reiki from the universe, whereas other normal, healthy people can't? There's a blockage where there's not any energy entering this person. It's called a source point where the field has disassociated from the body somehow. And that's where he made his first adjustments. And that's where he would get medical results, like increase in hearing, increase in uh, physical functions, a cessation of pain. But the intention wasn't to chase the, the, the loss of hearing. The intention was to chase the separation of the, of the light from the physical part of the body. When the word um, chiropractor crossed my path, it's always about some sort of manual manipulation. Yeah. Um, recently, I realized that you're certainly not limited to that, and but I had no idea that really it has to do with the light body as well. Uh, yeah. But so you learn about this in the so formal it's, education. It's in different colleges. You'll notice that the chiropractors are as about as political as you can imagine for a small profession around fifty to sixty thousand practitioners. It's highly polarized, and this polarization goes way back. You know, in the foundation of the colleges, when when one school of thought was seen to be a little bit too dogmatic, you'd see the, the professors, the teaching staff spin off and they would. So their first, the first chiropractor we're talking about the Palmers, they themselves fell out amongst themselves. So these different schools of thought, you'll you'll see 10 percent of chiropractors have a very specific political, uh, spiritual bent. Other groups right now, the profession is dominated by the, the more mainstream group. Right, that you were saying, like, is associated with back pain manipulation. Right, makes um, sense. So, but in chiropractic college, there it's in these schools that are still using this traditional mindset, like Palmer College, like Life College. They have uh, both of them have multiple campuses. They still use what's called in the first, especially the first couple of uh, of semesters. They use uh, what's referred to as chiropractic philosophy. And this light body that we're referring to is referred to generically as innate intelligence, 
right? So we're talking about an organizational intelligence that goes on in the body that when it's not interfered with. So it, it borrows absolutely from this, what we're calling the light body or these metaphysical languages that we're using now in the 2000s, right? But at the time of the 1890s, where they were looking at trying to create a secularized um, scientific approach to bioenergetics, right? They were using uh, this, this phraseology, innate intelligence. You'll see again the, the Palmers using uh, developing the prototypes of the EEG, the electroneural and supplementipograph, right? This EEG machine where they really try, they believe that they'll be able um, to read the energetics before and after. So BJ Palmer developed would adjust people in Faraday cages. Gotcha. Right. Right. Because right? they were they uh, and they were using again Soviet models of medicine, which we don't have necessarily uh, different ideas. In other words, that uh, you could in, like um, by using a very strong adjustment, not necessarily chasing the back pain, but the strong adjustment at the brainstem level, at the right place, the body would reboot. Wow. Like, like a therapeutic coma could reboot you. That's fantastic. I had no idea that background was part of, uh, you know, chiropractics. Um, so, you know, as you know, we came to your office, we had, we assembled a group of people, a group of four people together. We spent a good couple hours doing a number of different therapies and, and practices and tools to better the wellness, better oneself. I, what I can tell you for sure, and I've, I've spoken to each one of these people, is that it made a profound effect a significant difference on each person um, after the event, you know, your workshop was over. And so I kind of want to go through some of the things you did because you actually hit on quite a few different therapies um, during these, you know, the couple hours that you spent with the uh, four participants. Some of the things we did were use magnetics or mag magnets on acupuncture points, I believe, right? Um, you did some balancing of energies and alignment. I believe you you actually use some sort of energy work like Reiki. At least that was what I believe based on my observation, but we'll hear a little bit more from you. Um, we did a good bit of muscle testing um, for testing beliefs and emotional blocks. And we did muscle testing for uh, flower essence that support you know healing some of these issues. There are a number of other things we did as well. And I'd like to hit a little bit on you know, on all of those, if we could. Even though we are looking for, diff we are using different technologies or tools, our aim is always for the same, uh, the same target, which is how do we dissipate the, the, the uh, separation of physical from spiritual, ego from universal, um, fight or flight from at ease. Right. Mm -hmm. These things are somewhat, again, all sort of, they sync up. And what I've done is just pick up what other people have already mapped. I'm not necessarily inventing it. I'm picking out, oh, this muscle testing is done by this group. And this is their intention, which is to get the flower essence that speak for your spirit. Right. And oh. uh, the acupuncture channel, it doesn't matter if you use a needle or a laser or an ice cube or a magnet. If the point is, is already used by the body, if the body's already using the point to expel and take in energy from the field, from your greater body, that's really what, that's the acupuncture point we're looking for, source points, right? If you can activate the source, same things happen. I'm trying to unify your greater, your greater spiritual body with your physical body. And it, and it re results in you going into a greater state of ease. So my practical experience is, yeah, they do sync up. Getting people into a relaxed state, they naturally go into states similar as if they're going to sleep. Gotcha. Right. Now, can you reach that same sort of state if you were, um, say, hypnotized, went through some sort of hypnotherapy? It, I, what, there, it's, it all comes down to, like, brain waves. Is that correct? Different states of uh, brain waves? I, what I believe I'm doing with each person is some, I'm setting them off into their own personal chaos. What I mean by that chaos, uh, I mean it in the sense of uh, the way the Chinese chaos is also opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, th that to burn gasoline or to, to, to get the alpha cells to activate, you've got to plop, plop, fizz, fizz, right, into the water, right? Then 
the, the chemicals get, interact with the water, they go to a higher state of reorganization, all the physics, just like acid, when it's lit, that latent energy and the octane, right, then separates, the carbon bond separates, that's when all the energy is released. Chaos is the energy being released. And then after all that energy is released, right, you get from the gasoline being burnt, you get water and carbon, carbon dioxide, monoxide, right? Same, same thing what we're looking to do. You have to put a person through some kind of crucible for their latent ability to transform their own negative energy and recycle it, right? That happens on its own. If you can get the body to just see it, to recognize it. So much of our stuff exists in a blind spot. If you relax enough though, like, oh, 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 body starts to notice it and then it becomes automatic, right? My, my work is not so much to create a, uh, even though let's say we use flower essences, it's not to give you the suggestion that yeah, you're in a, you need rescue remedy because you're traumatized but is to read what I really believe what we're finding out is that our thoughts are things. Yes. Right. And they exist in the greater field of the body. So our ability actually to process possibility, what's possible for us, like our karma or what's going to happen in synchronicity. This is lately charged in the field. It's already in our physical body. And that's why some people, that's why eventually you'll meet somebody at the airport because you're like, like a styrofoam ball bobbing in a, in a lake. You're eventually going to go to on the, on the wave. You're going to go to meet, right? That's because our greater energy bodies are like that. The problem is, is when we're at this heightened state of modern life, we're so overexcited, it becomes polarized. And that those energies become so crystallized that they end up running us. Instead of a lesson, it turns out to be that's the rest of our lives. Uh, one of the other methods you use are, are tiny little powerful magnets. Uh, what are the ideas around this, and, and how is this similar to, say, an, an acupuncture needle? Basically, we're talking about the difference between magnets and needles in the, in the way that we're going to address the body. Right? The, mag, the magnet as a tool right, is sort of limited by the size and the gauss of the magnet itself. So for years, we had a hard time finding, like there were Korean hand magnets, which were tiny but powerful. You really have to find the point very specifically and yam them in for them to work. Hmm. Um, Dennis, to a save on cost, we found these BBs, you know, like, but they weren't magnets. They were just steel. One was a gold plated, one was silver plated. It was associated with a positive negative iron charge, mild magnetism. But the real work has come up over the last year. I found these magnets that went from a dollar a piece to about 12 cents a piece. Oh, wow. And okay. And they're about 1,200 gauss, which for a little magnet is powerful. So these magnets, when I started putting them on people, they got a better response than needles. And there's certain points that you cannot needle because they're too close to blood vessels. So they're ignored. And there's a very potent heart point, two heart points, pericardium on the, on the heart channel. that are constantly no uses. But because, um, again, we use the magnet, and where our principle here is, is that our primary cause of disease is sort of the separation of our ego from our spirit, which is felt sort of as, as a sadness in, in the heart, in this heart area. That's where we start. That's the. Do so you think they're actually they're more effective than the needles in many cases? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, now I, I get what you're saying about you know some needles you just can't put in certain places, so they're overlooked, but. Even in the areas that you can put needles, you, you, you feel like the magnets are uh, more potent or it's, more effective? Yeah, it's basically to be a great needler, you have to be like 27, like the classical training is like 27 years of like real specific study. Using magnets is like using a shotgun instead of having to use like a laser. Hmm, okay. You, you're using a big uh, driver. Right, you don't have you can you can miss a little bit and still get it. Gotcha. That that makes sense because the mag you have a magnetic field and it kind of spreads out a little bit. Yeah. Same principle is true as when you're using electroacupuncture. Right, the point itself has a lowered skin resistance. So even if you're not exactly on the point, the lowered skin resistance, the point will actually act as a little wire, and then the, the point itself will be stimulated. So I had a, my training in acupuncture was really led by someone who preferred uh, microcurrent and electroacupuncture to needle acupuncture in their practice. In the, so even though we were learning acupuncture and it was uh, through the University of Shanghai in China, uh, you know, a traditional acupuncture program, 
the traditional training in it was not necessarily for needles. You could use anything oh. you want at that point. And I had no idea. Like, That's very neat. Right? Yeah. Huh. So in the classical term for acupuncture is not acupunctura is sort of the Portuguese, because that's what they saw. They saw acu needle, you know, puncturing. But the, uh, the Chinese phrase is meridian therapy, right? Hmm. So there's a two-fold way it looks like acupuncture works in the body, right? One is that the points represent a stems and branches, what it's classically called, a stemming and branching out of the body of points into the field, source points. Okay. What, one of the... Right. Donnie Epstein refers to the points he's using as spinal gateways. And actually, the points that he's using, the spinal facet points, are from a secondary acupuncture system known as Huatua Jaw G, which was an acupuncture system that was in favor in China for about 200 years and used a different map. He used the map of the spinal facet points from about the lower neck to the tailbone and used the needle specifically in spinal points. Different than the associated points, if an acupuncturist listening familiar with this map, different than the associated points. They were gotcha. in between the associated point and the uh, governing vessel. So there's different maps as well. So the point being, it's not the map necessarily the magic of the point. It's just what the body's using the point for. If the point is latent and not doing anything, that's when you see certain, this was the popular form of acupuncture today. It's very popular in China. They, they they use the needle to try and create a reflexology, right? So like this is a classical point. Right. If I go to the dentist, this point is not active, but I'm starting to get tooth work here. So I'll put the needle here as it starts to hurt, and pain goes away because the point becomes act becomes latently active. Now it's active. It's not active all the time, right? So what you're looking for is points that are active. And then secondarily, once you get enough activation in the chi, like it's circulating, imagine dirty water. If it's flowing fast enough, eventually it starts to purify itself. So the secondary impact of drawing chi into the body and getting to remove the obstacles, it starts to flow better. And the secondary vibration that goes on when the chi starts to circulate through the meridians faster sets up, again, a kind of higher vibration, which looks to have a secondary effect. That's when you merge with your... Um, Again, a higher form, merge with that energy. You have to cook it up a little bit. You have to take that ice to water to steam. Gotcha. Right. So I'll tell you what was the most impactful for me. Uh, I'm very familiar with muscle testing. That was really kind of one of the first things that opened my eyes to this whole energetics thing that showed me that your body can has a better sense of what your body wants than you do intellectually, Right. So we were muscle testing based on um, unmet needs and yeah. feelings that our bodies or our self most desired. And what was so interesting to me, I was laying down, you were doing some muscle testing on me and you would utter the words. And depending on what the word was, my um, arm was uh, firm in place or it had a little bit more give to it. And so my arm was either congruent with my body. It was maybe a yes or a no, which would be you know, my arm would give and would be a little less congruent um, or a little less strong. What I found was so interesting is you were, you were speaking the words and my, my arm would respond, but then you stopped speaking the words. You were just reading the list, different unmet needs, like a whole, you know, a whole page of them. And you were reading the list. And as, I mean, I could see your fingers go down this list. And as your fingers were going down the list at each point, you would then, try and move my arm. And at each point I felt like I internally, I felt a different sort of um, strength in my arm. And, you know, again, I'll reiterate that initially you started by speaking the words and I could feel the different, uh, you know, strong, not strong, 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 not strong. And then you switched to not even uttering the words. So I had no idea what words you were looking at. I could just see that you were looking at words and your fingers were moving down this list. And my arm was still having the same sort of responses, strong, not strong, 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 not strong. So what that says to me is, I mean, it's kind of like we were telepathically connected. You know, this entrainment is, is taking place. And to have it 
demonstrated there in like just taking that one step and having it demonstrating demonstrated in that way it just completely opened my eyes to the power of what's the word is entrainment the right word so i'll say that i've had remote muscle testing done i don't know if that's the the right terminology but i have a number of practitioner friends and they do what i would consider muscle testing like a almost like a surrogate muscle testing done remotely they somehow tune in to my body's energetics and they'll do like self muscle testing and depending on if they're strong or or weak or whatever, they can determine whether I'm congruent or not. Mm. And, and that's really kind of mind blowing, but that is so, it's so mind blowing. (laughs) I'm so far removed by how all of that could possibly work. Um, It's almost not as impressive as you just taking that one single step of initially speaking the words and then shifting to not speaking the words, you know, there still was a significant difference. And it was just so cool to be able to experience that little shift. Yeah, it's like we were um, telepathically communicating. You were looking at the word and my body was responding to it. Right. And that was just fascinating to me. The entrainment just doesn't happen within, within the patient's body. Is that when you get on the patient and you actually find the spot, your brain waves and the patient's brain waves for a second look at the same space. And that's the weird part is that we're all sharing, like you said, the, the vibes, and you're going to the same space. When I, when I fix you, something communicates, and you're going to the same space momentarily. So we're all going to these same vibrational currents. It's obviously a mind-blowing example because, like you said, I don't know how that works. And it definitely shows us that the way that we think of our bodies and our, our spirits or our minds working, we probably have it reversed because that phenomena, like you said, is unexplainable by present standards. Like you can't explain why you walk into a room and someone yawns and that yawn travels around the room. Okay, all right, sure. Yeah. Trainment, can't explain it, right. right? So, but these things, you know, you, you know, Back in the day, you know, if your mom's mad at you, she doesn't have to say anything. She's she's back turned to you. You can probably feel it, right? Like, again, these kind of things, if we weren't socialized out of them, if we weren't socialized out, we probably would be very in tune with the ability to see, uh, to explain us. And I, and please forgive me, I speculate. What I think what we're tapping into is not that they were tep- telepathically linked, that outside of our egos, in our deep witnessing, we we're actually the same intelligence yes mind-blowing and that our egos reject that that we could have that much in common right right that no no, no i'm an individual and so the, that's why at the beginning of the workshop we played uh self-realization wayne dyer really putting the ego on its spot like basically you're going to die in 30 days what are you going to do now what's living what do you have to do what's left <laughs> Right, Wayne Dyer, and somehow Wayne Dyer is talking about the top five top top five wishes of the of the dying, like from people from hospitals, the things they have to do, they know that they didn't get to do on this lifetime, right? So because the primordial thing that's going on for people in their healthcare is that they're they're invested in the separation between ego and spirit somehow, and deconstructing that subtly without making people wrong, it's like. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a good example of it. Like, no, you're a strong person. You're just having a weak moment. As opposed to we got for another person, like they, they've been through so much trauma, they needed time to mourn. Right? Uh, it was been explained to me. He goes, well, show me a person who has no needs. What is that person? No needs. Well, that person's dead. Right, <laughs> exactly. Of life is needs. Right? So the little baby that comes into the, the bit, comes into life, closest to the spiritual being that will ever be. It's like quasi-enlightened, proto-enlightened little baby, right? Perfectly in bliss. Has the most needs of us all. Sure. Right? Somehow, what I perceived, like, how do we get to your, your question? Like, how does the muscle test work on a thought that you're not even speaking? I'm not even hearing it. Right. It, to me, it's demonstrating that after we get through clearing out a lot of the social truisms. That's what we did. That was, we saved the muscle testing for the last hour, right? 
So I blissed you out about two, three times already. That was the whole point. Right? I planted the seeds that, uh, that really you are a physical body, uh, not a physical body, having a spiritual experience. You are a spiritual awareness with the physical body as, the, you know, as an experience. Mm-hmm. Right? This primordial idea is said to be the root of our suffering. The concept that I am my body. So whether it was really obvious or not, that was the first note that we hit. It got in there. You are not your body. And for a couple and for a couple of minutes, me and the rest of the me, my team, we were holding the intention that you are all perfect childs of God, perfect children of God. There's nothing that you have ever done that ever has ever been wrong or not perfect. Everything has been has been done, has been to get you to the like if you could do better, you would. In the Aristotelian sense, you're at your, you're in your essence. Right. I see you all as that. So by clearing that space, that the only thing we're seeing you as is spiritual awareness, right? That's our primary idea. That's the idea that I'm really holding for you as a muscle testing you. Now, what's the, what does this spiritual awareness, what's the unmet need, right? What part of its life is saying, hey, life supports life, right? Those ideas are very strong, right? right? You see even like in the nature videos of animals helping each other or like the dolphins, you know, asking for help from humans, right? And that level, that's a very powerful communication. Can I assist, can I assist life? And you can see, you can feel it physically, right? If I bring up something that your spirit needs, it's a physical reaction. So in that primacy, when we flip it around, it's just, again, it bends our ego's bias that our physical experience may be not as important as we think it is. The really primordial reason why you have a body is to have a spiritual experience. <laughs> right? That's what you're really here for. That's why the muscle testing registers so, because that's what you're really here. You're, we are here to have these feelings met, to interact with other people, and to grow this kind of sensibility. I, I, yeah, I, I just think, I mean, I, I talk about muscle testing a fair amount because I think it's just a uh, an amazing important tool and if people really truly realized um the the connection that's involved when muscle testing or the the fact that we do have the ability to connect in magical ways to one another that we're all connected i i think it really would shift so many people's paradigm uh so many people's awareness i mean it did for me when i you know, it was my Tony Robbins experience that we did a lot of muscle testing. And then we got into energy work and one experience after another. And, and it really threw me for a threw me for a loop. But I walked out of there realizing that we're truly connected, that there's a whole lot more than our day to day. And man, I, I've got I've got to help spread the word. This is fantastic stuff. Right. We but even it. even with this exercise. So I was talking to um, one of the young ladies that participated and she said what was so great about the muscle testing is, you know, for her as well, she could feel it in her body when she was congruent or not, right? When you stopped speaking the words, she could still feel whether she was congruent or not, depending on what, you know, what word you were going down the list on. And she said what that did for her is she's really, so she's really stuck in her head. That allowed her to get out of her head and her body was able to openly um, respond on its own behalf, I guess. Right? right. And and I just thought that was very cool that she had a very similar experience as I did in that way. Right. That brings up like what Carl Rogers, the psychologist said that most people, the only truth we'll ever know is through the body. The body is our truth. So much of what we're doing is getting the body to tune into the channel of, re, of rejuvenation, tune into the channel of reboot, tune in that tune into a symphony of your higher self. Is only then will the system relax enough for it to do these higher functions. So much of our rigid experience is that we're assuming the body is a reality because it can only pick up a couple of channels. And it's a little bit of a different model because the idea that uh, through the body work now, you can relax your ability to bring in experience. Right? Now that makes sense. Whereas before, it's like, oh, no, if I'm having mental stress, I've got to talk therapy now. Right? Ah, maybe not. Right, maybe a probiotic will clear your gut, you know, help you clear your head. Maybe going gluten free will clear your mind. 
right? Now we know that these different tools work on a psychological level, but the, the same maxim is true. It's an experience in the body. The, the body right. is our, it's the litmus test, right? Well, so, and, and of course, based on the muscle testing that you did, um, you then got out some of the uh, flower essence and you did some muscle testing with that. But I, I think you may have already had kind of an idea of the type of flower essence that we the, that would be used to support the type of issues that were coming up when we were doing some of the test work. Right. You're, you're, you're onto something, right? I was deliberately bringing up the uh, distress. And at that point, at that level, I didn't know what it would predict because I don't like the, I, I agree in the idea of the double blind test. I don't want to know what I'm, what label, what the label says, because I don't want to predict what it is for the person. Just the way I know that ha had I mentioned a bunch of negative phrases for the person, the person may have been ashamed at the muscle test. So by saying it silently, just meditating on the word morning or meditating on the word fun, I know that would deliver deliver the same impact as saying it, but also filter out their bias. So when I would bring up the unmet needs, I know what I was doing is leaving you all in the lurch. Because here we are talking about, I remember one, uh, one of the uh, participants, what came up was uh, being cheated, feeling that, that they, yes. they cheated in life. Right. That's a negative state, being betrayed. It's one of, you know, it's a big deal. So finally, the idea was is to bring that latent energy to the, to the fore and then quickly find what would soothe it from the flower essences, right? And that did give us the opportunity then to take the flower essences for, the, for people to have that feeling of shift from the flower essence, right? And that's what I wanted to do. And, and it was a little bit of a dirty trick, but to give people a little bit of their own distress, a taste of their chaos, hmm. right? And in so doing, then give them the resolution. Here's the, here's the remedy for that chaos. Here's the soother, right? The, the harmonizing frequency, which will put that back into, you know, the chaos back into, into opportunity. Right. Right? So, so that's what the flower essences were. And I don't think they would have worked, and I've tried doing it at a different point. I don't think it would have worked as well at the beginning. Had I just in the flower essences, hey, how are you doing? Let's touch your, I'll touch your flower essences. Right. Right? And because we weren't as open to receive it. Yeah. And at the beginning, we just handed out rescue remedies, Right. Just hand it out rescue remedies to people. Just take them, right? Just because it's distressing to tell you to tell you no, you're you're you are not your body. Your ego's gonna freak out. So, how do you see things moving forward in the um, like a medical arena? Do you feel like the energetics is going to continue to grow and be a more commonplace um, in in medicine, or do you think? Do you see the two? Never is no. like oil. They will continue to bomb, to uh, libel, to slander. The medical profession wants nothing to do with these kind of outcomes, right? It interferes with their idea of a top down for profit model. True. Uh, yep. I think chiropractors and energy medicine people, we have to abandon the field of healthcare. We have to embrace like yoga therapy model of preventive medicine. And stop telling people we're going to cure their asthma. Stop telling people we're going to uh, do alternative medicine. Just conceive the whole field. Hmm, Just, okay. Right. But the whole like the whole re the whole resistance to chiropractors getting paid is because we insist on calling ourselves doctors. Okay, that, that's interesting. I haven't heard that take before. Yeah. No. So I, what would you call that whole field? Um, wellness practices. Uh, um, wellness practitioners. Right. Okay. Call them in England, you don't call dentist doctor, you call him mister. I think the, the, the insistence of chiropractors to be known as the equivalent of a school superintendent or a doctor, you know, an MD who's gone through like triple the level of training, I think creates a lot of social resistance and uh, creates confusion, like the bait and switch, like I'm going to take care of your pain. Pain in what sense? Pain in the sense of, you know, did you have energetic congruency? Oh, I I needed you to help me with like my pancreatic tumor, God forbid, you know. And I and I'm serious. I think that the the the, the mishmash of those two practical outcomes just follow the money. It's the the fact that uh, alternative practitioners want to be paid by Medicare and get and uh, fulfill all these other kind of um, 
profit for medicine model, like fee for service. Then they, but they can't come up with the double blind studies that the drug medicine can come up with. Yet the Eisenberg studies of the 90s, they demonstrate people spend more out of pocket on, on massage therapy, on vitamins, and health food than they do on other medicines. There's plenty okay. of, right? It's just a matter of social allocation. But I, so on the other, on the flip side of the coin, um, things like acupuncture has, is very recognized by insurance companies and is often covered by insurance companies. Um, I have not found that to be true. They no? Say, okay. The, the co-pays are on the $40 range. They'll say they pay for it, but the co-pays are prohibited. Anything over $20 is a prohibitive copay. So I would prefer, provide these services, say, uh, 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 acupuncture charge. They won't pay for it beyond, they'll give you another $5 beyond the copay. So they tell their patients, they tell their insured that basically they're covered. Then they find out that only if you have this uh, need, like chiropractic, you are covered for chiropractic, only if you have whiplash. Only if you had low back pain. Right. So it's still it's still framed as um, um, helping to fix an issue versus preventive um, preventive practices. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a- that makes sense. But I mean, for me, it was for me. It seemed like a, a big step that insurance companies are covering thing things of that nature at all. It's an advance to some extent, but the acupuncture that's getting paid for at the insurance level is only performed by licensed acupuncturists under the direction of anesthesiologists, right? So medical acupuncture for post-chemo that's done in the, done in the hospital level. It's not like it's getting farmed out to the general practitioners, right? It's kept the money, follow the money. It's kept in a very narrow band. So there is yeah. money going for some of these therapies, but only to ameliorate and complement the medical care that's already in a very tightly bound, steep pyramid with the medical doctor at the top. Okay. Right. So yes, these biogenic therapies might be used. They might refer to a massage therapist who does cranial sacral. But again, it's going to be within that, if it's going to be used within that system. Or Yeah, and I have heard it uh, being used with cranial sacral. There's actually a, a good friend of mine. She works at Hopkins. Now, Hopkins, I know, can be a little bit more lenient because they're all about education. And um, But basically, there are some energetic practices She's in physical therapy. There are some energetic practices um, that she has learned that it is all it is all energy work. And but because there seems to be enough data that supports that is it is helpful. Hopkins has given that, you know, that uh, the flag of approval and those energy work practices are actually covered through insurance. Um, And I think that's very cool. Once again, I think that's a cool step in what I believe to be the right direction, but I understand what what you're saying. It's not in the sense of preventing issues. It's more from the direction of because something has happened and they're they're very controlled about where that money goes. Yeah. I'm not that impressed with the beneficence of our medical uh, tyrants, right? That the fact that Johns Hopkins would certify a traditional medicine that's been around thousands of years, right? doesn't impress me. Gotcha. It's the flip side, right? Does look at traditional medicine. Do, do, how do I feel about chemo? Do I think they're actually doing a good job for people? Do I, what do I think of their outcome assessments, right? Outcome assessment of stuff like uh, outside American medicine outside the ER, the outcome assessment is like 25 to 35% patient satisfaction rate. Well, it is nice to know that more people seem to be even more open now than just even a couple of years ago to therapeutic practices that someone like yourself has to offer. I mean, I feel like it's just popping up all, all over the place. And maybe it's because of what I'm doing and the, and the circles that I'm now involved in, but I really feel like it's becoming more commonplace. Uh, right. Even a movie I saw recently, um, Brad Pitt was giving Sandra Bullock Reiki. Right. Of course, then he got shot. But um... <laughs> but the culture is moving. And like I'm saying, like the, the model is the yoga practice, right? Has you 20 years ago that people would go to the to a gym, do yoga, and refer to it as my practice. That's impressive. That's a cultural shift. Yes. If people embrace my health as my my practice, right? Now you got something. That's yeah. where I see this shift. Like uh, those two characters were Pitt was giving uh Senator Book Reiki, not you know, in a way that is, you know, for a healthcare outcome up here, as opposed <laughs> to in New York. 
So do I think medical doctors start using Reiki? No. Right. But I think that moms will start using Reiki on their kids. Yes. Yeah. Right. To that end, it will become a, hopefully what I like, like I remember Epstein was telling us that they were interested in teaching people basic network to do at the UN. The UN was interested because they said, you know, we could train um, people to do uh, basic network, the basic work, because we see a lot of public health benefit. So the thesis was, would you be okay with people doing about a third of what you do? Like we train physical therapists to do the basics, right? And, you know, not, but just to improve mental health, to improve outcomes. Right? So I think that's the way that I see the energetics and this that's good. the culture. Is there anything that you wanted to add briefly before we uh, wrap things up? Donnie Epstein and a lot of, a lot of chiropractors who do the high end spiritual work don't like muscle testing. They won't use it. Hmm. Right. Okay. So put that out there as a caveat. Muscle testing is like a, is a fine tool that is often um, asked to do broad labor. And let me just say, just let me sum it up. Muscle testing works best as a binary code. Yes, no. And it gets very easily confused with, with uh, questions are grade eight, uh, like letter gate grades or shades of gray. So in that way, my, my caveat in having really excellent muscle testing is don't do it until you get a whole bunch of clarity, breath waves, and a whole bunch of uh, body response, which tells me that the person is really, spirit is really up for, your spirit is really speaking, right? If they're not in their victim state and, they're, and that you can sense that they want to get their curiosity, that they really want to get to, to the next level. Fair enough. Well, this has been amazing. Um, this really has fan been fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Lauren, listen, I'm so impressed that you would call me up and make me part of your show. Thank you. Thank you.